Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I'm going to be making Deb Perlman's turkey meatloaf. Turkey meatloaf for skeptics. This is out of the book, Smitten Kitchen Keepers. Um, so Deb and I are doing this podcast and as part of the podcast, we are making each other's recipes. Um, and so uh, she's making my meatloaf recipe and I'm making hers. Um, so starts with a medium yellow onion, roughly chopped, garlic cloves smashed, and uh, one slim carrot, roughly chopped. Um, I, I've got very, very slim carrots, or very small carrots, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna use two of them instead of the one. So yeah, Deb, Deb and I, um, we've been sort of operating in the same space for uh, a couple decades now. Both of us have been developing recipes uh, and writing about it online uh, since, I don't know, 2000. She's been doing it since 2008 or so. I think I've been doing it since around the same time. Uh, maybe 2000, maybe, or actually, maybe she was 2006. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, mid to early 2000s. Both of us have been recipe developers since then. Um, I started out at magazines um, and then did some online stuff and now do, you know, newspapers and books. Deb has been doing uh, online and books uh, since the beginning. Um, but, you know, we thought it would be fun to have a podcast together about the process of developing recipes and what goes into it. Because I think, um, you know, some, some people have different, I guess people have different ideas of what a recipe developer does. Some people think, I remember I went to a, um, I went to a, an event once at a private club in San Francisco. I was, uh, invited to check out the Bohemian Club, which is like, uh, you know, like an like an old white dude's fraternity type thing. They do you know, secret secret events in the woods and blah blah blah. But anyhow, I was there and I remember um, one guy asking me what I do, uh, and I said, "Oh, I'm a recipe developer." And he said, "Oh, what? So what does that mean? You like do you like follow Thomas Keller around and write down what he does?" <laughs> Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe that's what some people think a recipe developer does. You just follow around a chef and write down what they do. Um, but no, that's not really what a recipe developer does. Our job is to, uh, well, figure out what people want to cook, figure out how people cook at home, uh, and then basically figure out how to make sure that the results we want people to get at home and the, the results that people want to get at home are what they get. Uh, if they follow the recipe. So a lot of it is sort of foolproofing, a lot of it is obviously sort of testing techniques and ingredients and seeing what works and what doesn't, what steps are important, what steps are not. Um, a lot of it is sort of getting yourself into the head of a home cook and uh, trying to anticipate problems that people might have before they make them. I don't know. You know, De Deb and I, obviously, we have very different approaches to both cooking and recipe development, which is why I think this show is going to be uh, so much fun. She's also just a lovely person to talk to. All right, so in her recipe, we dice up an onion. We dice up a couple carrots. Um, she says you can use the food processor or do it by hand. I'm going to do it by hand just because I find uh, messing up the food processor for you know, small tasks like this. It, it, it saves you time on the task itself, but cleaning up the food processor and pulling it out and all that stuff uh, ends up taking more time than it's worth, at least for me. Your kitchen setup might be different. Your, uh, your food processor might, processor might be different from mine. Maybe your, your dishwashing situation might be different from mine. Maybe you've got someone who comes and washes your food processor for you. But I'm glad Deb gave us uh, the option here. So turkey meatloaf, I mean, one of the problems with turkey, obviously, is that it can be a lot drier than um, something like beef or uh, lamb or pork. Um, but, you know, with meatloaf, you add other things to it, uh, binders such as breadcrumbs and vegetables, eggs things that are going to add moisture and flavor to it. Um, so maybe you can even get away with turkey. Got a pan, said olive oil in the bottom of the pan. 
we're going to saute our vegetables. So my recipe for meatloaf calls for carrots, onions, and celery. Hers is just carrots and uh, carrots and onions and garlic. Mine, mine calls for carrots, onions, celery, and garlic, I believe. But uh, hers doesn't have celery in it. But both of us do pre-cook uh, the flavor base, which I think is sort of a, I think, an essential step um, for meatloaf. You can add these things in raw, but then it ends up tasting sort of steamed and raw as opposed to um, more like a meatloaf. All right, salt. And pepper. Cook till they begin to brown. All right. Meanwhile, I'm going to start the other stuff going. All right. Half cup of breadcrumbs. Oh, roughly. I will follow her recipe using uh, measurements and everything. Half cup of breadcrumbs. Quarter cup of chicken broth. I'm pretty sure this is a quarter cup. Quarter cup of chicken broth. Half tablespoon of tomato paste. Okay, teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Tablespoon of Worcestershire. Couple tablespoons of flat leaf parsley. Okay. Teaspoon salt. And half a teaspoon of pepper. And as well as the egg. All right, so that's that. And meanwhile, I'll also make the glaze. All right, the glaze ingredients are a heap tablespoon of ketchup. That's a heap tablespoon of ketchup. Tablespoon of molasses. Okay. Tablespoon of cider vinegar. A teaspoon of hot sauce of my choice. Uh, I'm gonna go with El Perro Afortunado. A, um, this is from Lucky Dog. Ooh, I added a little more than I called for, that's okay. And a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Okay. Kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. See how that glaze is. All right, we're beginning to brown here. I think we're good.
Okay, vegetables in. So it's not a ton of um, breadcrumbs for the amount of uh, other stuff in here, I think. It's an interesting ratio. We'll have to talk about that. All right, now we'll add our egg. Mix it together. She says she likes to do it with a fork. Beating it directly into the veg vegetable mixture. I like to use a fork. Add the turkey and combine just until the vegetable egg mixture is dispersed through the meat. Okay. I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to add the vegetable mixture to the turkey. Now that everything's in here, actually, it's, you know, it's a pretty good amount of fillet of turkey. It's about 50-50, which I think is a good ratio for a meatloaf, especially a turkey meatloaf. You know, the higher the ratio of stuff to meat, the more tender your meatloaf is going to be. And with something like turkey, which has a tendency to get tough and dry, having a higher ratio of filler to meat is, I think, nothing but a good thing. All right. And she says, just until dispersed, I agree. You don't want to overwork meatloaf. That the more you work it, the uh, the more the protein in there kind of cross links. It's like almost like making um, making bread. You know, where the more you knead your dough, the more the, the protein in the in the uh, the dough cross links, and the more gluten forms when you're making your bread. Same thing happens with making uh, meatloaf. The more um, the more you knead that meat mixture, the uh, tighter it'll become. Uh, oh, she did say to oil, lightly coat a uh, baking tray or dish with uh, non-stick spray. I don't have non-stick spray, so I'm using oil. And then you pat the mixture into a 4x8 shape in your prepared pan and uh, brush it with the glaze. I'm going to do this by hand. Gently pat it into shape, roughly four by eight. Okay, that is significantly easier than my meatloaf so far. <laughs> Although pretty similar in terms of process. Ketchup Worcestershire. Molasses is basically, you know, like a barbecue glaze. Less sweet than uh, your sort of typical barbecue glaze, which is a good thing, I guess. Doesn't say anything about reapplying or coating it. Brush or spoon the glaze over the meatloaf. No, that's it. Hmm, okay. So you do it all at once. No, uh, no extra coatings later on. Let's get all that glaze on there then. All right, into the toaster oven it goes. 350 degrees. It'll take 30 to 35 minutes and we will see you later. All right. I'll see you in a bit. It's been about half an hour. I'm gonna take the meatloaf out of the oven now, and we'll see where we're at. It's looking pretty good. Looks pretty much like the one in the picture, huh? Oops. Lost a bit of the base there. It's okay, that's the, uh, That'll be the taster, the taster bit. Let's see what you got, Deb. 
Oh yeah. That tastes just the way meatloaf should. <laughs> Deb's got like a... Um, her recipes always taste the way they should, you know? She's got that thing where she finds that right balance between effort and reward. Um, she knows what people are looking for. And she delivers pretty consistently. Look at this texture in here. Nice and moist. Plenty of flavor. That's about as good as turkey meatloaf gets. All right. <laughs> this is a good recipe. All right, we'll have plenty to talk about. Um, all right, that's Deb, uh, Deb Perlman's turkey meatloaf from Smitten Kitchen Keepers. Um, we're gonna talk about this on the podcast. Uh, the recipe, which you can get anywhere you get your podcast. Um, you can find the recipe for this in her book. Otherwise, you can just, you know, look at the rough amounts of stuff I stuck in there while I was making it. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, gals, non binary pals, I will see you next time. All right, bye bye.